I'm saddened that it is politically inconvenient to acknowledge what everyone knows. The Iraq war is largely about oil. Alan Greenspan, former U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Iraq. Professor Finkelstein, if I may start mm -hmm. with you, it is almost inevitable we have to uh, check in the two reasons given by the administration as presented by Colin Powell in the Security Council, and that is uh, links to Al-Qaeda and WMDs. Did you, do you now put any credence in those, or were these just a canard? I don't think that the administration seriously believed those claims. It was already pretty clear from the time that Saddam Hussein's son-in-law defected to the West that there were no weapons of mass destruction. And it was also clear early on that there were no connections between, no significant connections between Saddam and uh, Al-Qaeda. So it's not a question even of whether I believe it. It's very doubtful that on the eve of the war that the U.S. administration or the key figures in the U.S. administration believed it. Professor Mearsheimer, in light of what uh, Professor Finkelstein just said, there are two explanations for that. Either the administration has stumbled into this war or President Bush and his cabinet and the people made the decision to go to war. Simply, they were lying. Well, I do think that the Bush administration honestly believed that he had WMD. And I think you could make a case that there was some reason to believe that he might have chemical and biological weapons. I think there was no reason to believe that he had a nuclear program. And I don't think there was good reason to believe that there were any meaningful links between al-Qaeda uh, and Saddam. But one could argue that the Bush administration convinced itself of that. Nevertheless, even if they didn't think that those threats were manifest at the time, they did believe it was imperative to get rid of Saddam Hussein. Uh, the Israelis argued, for example, time after time, and this was clearly reflected in a comment that Bill Clinton made after the war started. Bill Clinton said that every Israeli leader I knew believed that even if Saddam didn't have WMD, that he was such a threat to the region that he needed to be removed. I think that basic line of argument reflected the administration's view as well as the Israelis' view. So in the end, it really didn't matter very much whether they believed that he had WMD or he had close ties with al-Qaeda. Since you went immediately to the jugular and you ticked off Israel, is that your belief? They played a primary role? They were the instigators and they were behind the scenes pushing the administration to go to war to remove that existential threat? There's absolutely no question that there is uh, a great deal of evidence that shows that the Israelis were pushing the United States hard to go to war against Iraq from the spring of 2002 up until we invaded on March 19, 2003. But the fact of the matter is that it was really the Israeli lobby, especially the neoconservatives who were a core constituency inside of that lobby, who came up with the idea of toppling Saddam with military force and were pushing hard uh, to do that from about January 1998 up until March 2003. The argument that Steve Walt and I make in our book is that the Israel lobby, again, mainly the neoconservatives, were the principal driving force in the United States behind the war in Iraq. Now, we argue that the lobby by itself, or the neoconservatives by themselves, couldn't make the war happen. They definitely needed President Bush and Vice President Cheney to be on board. And that happened after September 11th. Do you buy that <laughs> argument, Professor Finkelstein, the Israeli lobby and the Israelis, they hijacked the administration <laughs> policy towards Iraq? I, uh, I do not think the evidence supports that claim. The problem is you have to disentangle a large number of claims that are being made. And you'd have to go through them one by one. And I'll try to do that very quickly now. First of all, just on a preliminary point, because it becomes important later, I don't think anyone believed that Saddam Hussein posed a significant military threat to the region. Quite the contrary, the evidence as we now have it 
shows that virtually everybody in the administration expected that it would be a quick war, a quick victory, and an easy victory. Number two, the architects and chief architects of the war were usually called the Vulcans. Of the chief architects of the war, people like Rumsfeld, Cheney, and so forth, of the chief architects of the war, only one counts as a neoconservative, namely Mr. Wolfowitz. Number two, even if it were true, and in my opinion there's no evidence that it is true, but even if it were true that the neoconservatives were pushing, were the main impetus behind the war, you then still have to show that the neoconservatives were acting on Israel's agenda and not a domestic agenda. So there are many parts that remain to be demonstrated in this kind of argument. One, you have to show that the neoconservatives were among the chief architects of the war. I see no evidence for that. Number two, even if you were, even if you were to show that, you'd have to demonstrate that the neoconservatives were acting at Israel's behest and not on behalf of a domestic agenda. Perhaps if and you I can no hold that thought for, that for just, a, just a second, Mir, Mir, Finkelstein, and give a chance to uh, Mirsheimer to answer that, just bear in mind that from 91 to 2003, Iraq and primarily Saddam's regime were in a box. So what kind of threat, why would Israel would go all this way to push the administration to go war? And please answer what Finkelstein just said, please. Well, just to deal with what Norman said, uh, I'm not arguing that uh, the war was pushed by the neoconservatives simply because they believed it was in Israel's interests and not in America's interest. The fact is that neoconservatives believed that what is in Israel's interest is good for the United States and what's good for the United States is good for Israel. So the neoconservatives and the lobby more generally believe that this was a war that was good for both countries. With regard to the question of whether or not the neoconservatives were the principal architects or not, the fact is that the movement to topple Saddam from power by invading Iraq was initiated by the neoconservatives in 1998 and it was pushed very hard. They were the principal driving force behind the Iraq Liberation Act of 1998 and they initiated two letters that were sent to President Clinton in early 1998. Vice President Cheney uh, who then was out of office, obviously, uh, was not in favor of attacking Iraq uh, until uh, after September 11th. And President Bush and Secretary Rice and assorted other people were not interested in attacking Iraq either. The point is that the idea of attacking Iraq was initiated and pushed hard by the neoconservatives and other elements in the lobby. There's no question that you needed President Bush and Vice President Cheney to make the war happen. And therefore, no one would seriously argue that the neoconservatives by themselves made the war happen. But there's no question in my mind that they were one of the principal driving forces, and there's an abundance of evidence to support that. Thank you, Professor Mirsheimer.